Welcome to the Meadows Investment Forum. Molly price doubled recently. It's my great pleasure to invite Stakini Resource, David O'Brien. Welcome, David. Thanks so much, Jan. It's an honor to be here. Stakini Exploration. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Great. So, uh, yeah, tell us about Moli. Why does it went up so much? Suddenly, oh, every investor start talking about it. Well, we don't We don't know, obviously. It's had a fairly dramatic price increase. Um, Bloomberg had an article a couple of weeks ago, U.S., you know, and basically talked about how it had gone up 122% recently. And they called it the perfect storm. They said it was just growing demand for the green energy sector. And the biggest problem is dwindling supplies from the copper producers in South America, particularly the Mali. Most molybdenum comes as a byproduct from copper mining. There's very few pure play sources out there. And with copper mining, having the big producers in South America having production problems. And of course, the, the, the resources are dwindling and they're providing less molybdenum while demand's growing. So it's a, it's a perfect storm. It's a perfect storm. Yeah, that's a, excellent, excellent. That's that's great. Tell us your project. You you have either you have a shovel ready Modi project. Well, it, it was shovel ready during the last cycle. It went actually into fully funded. It went into construction, uh, fully permitted. And while just as they started building in the two thousand eight financial crisis, the price plummeted, and um, it ended up in receivership. And the co founder of a company picked it up and. We, uh, we convinced him to roll it in Stahini and we bought it for two and a half million dollars in cash and shares when Molly was less than $10 a pound and nobody cared. But I, I, real, I knew it was a very, as a world-class asset and, you know, it's just timing and one day we'll have its day. And um, when we got the project, I, I started, you know, talking to the International Molly Association and, you know, talked to Jeff Christian, the CPM group and Andrew Zemeck and watched a lot of their stuff. And we realized that there were going to be shortages, you know, it just it was just fundamental. And I think Molly is the canary in the coal mine for copper and zinc and all these base metals. You know, 40 to 50 years of tremendous underinvestment is going to cause shortages. Plus, you know, the next grade of deposits are much lower grade and, you know, difficult metallurgy and deeper and um, a lot of other variables. So, yeah, and, and we put out a resource estimate after we had the project and we hired MDA from Nevada and it was uh, 433 million pounds measured in integrated. That's, that's just a pit constrained resource. It's not a global resource. They use $15 US and 45 degree pit walls to get the resource. Wow, yeah. wow, that's, uh, that's amazing. So you basically at a 20, what's a multi price right now? Oh, I looked the other day, it was US $37 per pound. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, and again, well, I think when we got it, it was you know, seven or eight dollars a pound. Yeah. Right? So, wow. Well, what a great buy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, you know, we were, it was very difficult to raise money and we were raising money in December last year and we announced a financing and the, as the price went from 18 to 25, we were able to quickly fill that offering and it's kept going up and up and up and some people say it's going to go a lot higher, but we don't know, you know, we'll have to see how things settle, right? But we're, we're very excited. Wow. Well, excellent. Yeah. The, so tell us what is the net worth of the Modi you, you have right now underground at the current Modi price? Oh, I got to be careful because we don't, we don't have a PEA to go with that. Okay. But if you took, you know, 430 million pounds and you multiply that by the Price of Molly and converted, it's yeah, well over twenty billion Canadian, yeah, wow. you know. But but again, I need a PEA, and we're 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 quite confident that was a similar number that Larry Ray had with with Adnac, you know, with the, with the, with the former operator, and, and it's a very similar resource. We just did our own resource, so um, but it, it is it's a big world class for middle resource, and we believe there's four sort of pure play Molly to project similar size out there in the Western world for development, and you know, people think only one's going to go forward. Well, my goodness, we're, we're if we have four hundred and 33 million pounds. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's 600 million pound a year market. And by 2050, it's supposed to go to a billion pounds. So that's enough for five months for the planet. Right, Where are they right. going to get the rest from? Right, you know, right. it's, it's very interesting. You know? Very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, what's your market cap right now? You have uh, like a potentially 20 billion worth of Molly. And what's your right now? The uh, cap? We have 38 million shares outstanding. And our price is at 50 cents. We're about $19 million market cap with a million in the bank. So about $18 million enterprise value. Um, we've recently announced another financing and we're blessed. Eric Sprott gave us a lead order for a million dollars and there's been tremendous demand. I've never, I wasn't been begging for money the last couple of years <laughs> and now people are phoning us, offering us money, but we don't really need that much, right? Yeah, we right, just, right, right. So yeah, we have right. more than we need now for a while. So we want to go back to the markets, which we're excited about. Oh, wow, good, yeah. good. Hopefully the stock will have a, you know, people will realize you don't need money for a long time. So, yeah. uh, so the stock will go more with the multi price sure. as the multi price well, increase. Hope, yeah. And then you have the leverage. You are one of the four major potentially multi de deposit projects in the world, right? Yeah, we, 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 we do have the leverage. Yeah. And it, it is, it was the only one of all the projects, the only one that went into construction during the last cycle. But the other ones are good quality too. They're, they're similar, they're very unique, these climax style deposits, because um, they're not, they're not calcic based, they're, they're fluorine based. 
and uh, you basically crush and flow with water. So your mining's messy, but of all the type of projects you're going to build, this is as clean as an open pit you're going to get. And someone recently, the BC government jokingly said, we're building a um, a swimming pond with a sandy beach and and uh, ad and out. It's too cold to swim up there anyway. But it's true that it's very clean, it's non toxic, and and n typically with the most molybdenum coming from the byproduct from copper mining, a lot of reagents are needed to float the copper. You don't need those reagents with the molly. It's pure play, so wow. it's clean mining. Wow, good, good. So what's your plan for the rest of the year? Well, our plan is to complete the option agreement first, and that's six hundred and forty thousand dollars of the funding for that. And there's a there's a little bit of we have to move the drill core and, and pay the bond, and then we want to go to a preliminary economic assessment. We're actually contacting engineering firms as we speak right now, trying to find a firm because they're busy trying to find a firm to help us with the PEA. And then uh, we'd also like to get it's been through environmental review in the past, but we want to relook at the environmental and just do a data review to begin with and, and there's a lot of data to go over and we have uh, been in contact with the original people that did it for the last operator so it makes it somewhat familiarity the project make it less expensive and oh, great sense, yeah. great excellent and you also have a lot of other projects like silver that uh, excites me can you tell us a little bit more about the, all the other project that's actually carrying no value um, yeah. in, in your company yeah Jim, we first got Ruby Creek, no one cared about Molly. So we were kind of a call option on Molly and all the exploration we did, you know, proper, we flew the air, whole project with, well, the, the salient portions of the project with airborne geophysics, followed up ground and we found a lot of silver. We found, we have four different high priority silver targets we found. And also we're also the, the up until last year, the largest plaster camp in Canada was in Atlin and there's 10 significant pre, plaster creeks in the Atlin camp. And we have seven of the 10. So we've got a, go, a lot of good gold and silver. There's also a lot of tungsten in the area too. It's quite interesting. Um, and, but those are all early stage, whereas the molybdenum is much more advanced. We've also got a project we like in Revelstoke called uh, Big Ledge Nickel Project, or probably Big Ledge Zinc. And um, we, we surround tax crown grant claims. There's a hundred million ton resource there. And um, we've also done airborne survey on that. And we've got a nickel project in Manitoba that's, that's very interesting. And we really like another project in the Yukon we own. Uh, it's called um, the Q project in the Yukon. What kind of project is that? Uh, it, you know, it's got a bunch of targets. It's got some, some orogenic gold. It's got some VMS gold targets. And it's also got some platinum group elements. There's a creek called Quiet Creek with a lot of platinum and palladium. And, those, and, and a very strong ultramafic intrusive showing in the geo. Very interesting geophysics in, a, in an area that's never really been drilled. And uh, we got it from a prospect who has been the family for since the 60s. He's never farmed it. was the first junior to ever ever do modern exploration on it. So, oh, yeah. excellent. So what's your plan for all the other projects? You want to spin them off or you we, want to, uh, or you do some preliminary drilling first with all the money you got? Well, right, well, right now, you know, because for example, with, with, with a couple of these projects, having flown airborne surveys on, we've done enough work, we don't have to spend any money for, you know, up to 2025 or 2026. So we don't, we're not forced to do any work and our market cap's so low right now. We want to, you know, do some marketing and tell our story and get our cap up higher. We were looking at a plan of arrangement and, and to, to make a pure play Molly company, take all of our non-core assets, spin those off for our shareholders. And that's still in the works, but you know, the board has to make that decision. And right now we just have to be laser focused on molybdenum, uh, sort of incubate the other assets and, and really work on it. And go tell our story because no one really knows about us. And then, you know, there's, there's a lot of things we'd like to do is just, you know, get hit the road and, and tell our story and right, it needs good. to be told. Yeah. Good. Great. Finally, yeah. tell us about you. Well, why do you, um, Funded the Satini uh, this uh, exploration and what's your goal? And well, I've I, I've been an investor for almost forty years, Jen, and I I'll be honest with you, I don't like the way a lot of juniors are run. There, there's too many big salaries and too many dinners at highs and booze yeah, tabs. You're and, one of the highest paid CEO, right? What? How much do you get? I do two thousand dollars a month. Two thousand yeah. dollars a month. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I'm a big shareholder, right? Okay. My my motivation is my shareholdings. Last year, I drew. $24,000 in wages. My wife and I wrote $184,000 in checks for financings. Um, again, my money's where my mouth is. And, and I just, I, I mean, I want to get paid down the road if I can, you know, obviously create a, an acquisition and a takeout or find a big strategic partner, get a bonus sort of, but uh, uh, it'll be modest anyway. But I just, I just don't like the way juniors are run. You don't have much of a chance of making money when there's, you know, uh, too much lifestyle stuff going on. And I, th I think it's changed a lot. They're getting better and better. But I think the biggest thing, I'm a, I'm a businessman from the private sector. And I run a very successful sort of best in class business where you count every paperclip and every penny counts. And I try and bring that business act. I mean, even a lot of great, sincere, ethical geologists run companies, but they, they're not business people. And you need business people running a business from the top. And like, for example, no one cared about Ruby Creek and I, I can build a company on that. And we, we, we stake and acquire assets when they're cheap and they're out of favor. You never chase things when they're hot, right? You have to buy things when they're cheap and out of favor. And that's sort wow, of our, our value investing. Right? 
That, that's a great buy. That's yeah. a great buy, and congratulations. Thank and you. welcome to Meadows Investment Forum. Yeah, I'm really proud to be here, and I'm honored that I think the best newsletter writer of them all gave us initial coverage you did. Good for you to have the, the vision to you know to support us. And, and uh, I want to, I've used shareholders as um, business partners, and uh, my shareholders are the most important people in the world. So I'm okay, really great. Thank you to be a share. I'm so glad Thank to be a shareholder. So much.